In this video, I'd like to talk about a concept known as free energy imbalance. Sometimes this goes by the name of reduced entropy inequality. Also, people call this the clausius duhem inequality or the clausius planck inequality based on various assumptions that people make and the ways they write it down. But uh, we'll call it the free energy imbalance or the reduced entropy inequality. Now, let's recall some, a couple of, of, of points first. So first we have the, the first law. So that's conservation of energy. And then we have the second law. And so that's the entropy imbalance there. So again, rho is the density. Epsilon m is the internal energy density per unit mass. And eta m is the internal, or the entropy per unit mass, entropy density, I guess. D is the rate of deformation tensor, so that's the symmetric velocity gradient. Sigma is the stress tensor from Cauchy's theorem. R is the volumetric heating. Q is the heat flux. And theta is the absolute temperature. So these are uh, our first and second laws of thermodynamics. And what we're going to do to get the free energy imbalance relationship is we're going to combine up these relationships here. So let me just make some room here. So what I'm going to do firstly is I'm going to multiply the entropy imbalance law by the temperature. So when I do that, uh, the 1 over theta on, on the volumetric heating term will disappear, and then I'll get thetas on the first and the third terms. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these relationships here from doing this. But uh, just note that uh, it's going to be useful to expand out this last term here, the divergence of Q over theta times theta is going to give me the divergence of Q over theta times theta minus Q dotted with the gradient of theta times theta divided by theta squared. So it's just using a, a product rule of differentiation to expand that out. And then the th thetas here are going to cancel, and this will cancel with one of these guys here. So it'll be a 1 there. Okay, so. That's just going to give me divergence Q minus 1 over theta times Q dotted with the gradient of theta. So now if I subtract the second law from the first law, I'm going to get rho epsilon m dot minus theta m dot is less than or equal to the stress power plus the volumetric heating minus the divergence of Q minus the volumetric heating again, plus the divergence of Q, minus 1 over theta Q dot grad Q. So these three terms here are coming from the first law, and the next set of terms here are coming from the second law. And now you can see that a number of things are going to cancel out here. So the R's will cancel and the divergences of Q will cancel. So I'm only left with two terms on the right-hand side. And let me go ahead and introduce uh, the Helmholtz free energy. So psi m, so this is a definition, is equal to the internal energy density minus the absolute temperature times the entropy density. So that's just a definition. And psi m is usually called the Helmholtz free energy, or simply the free energy. So if I plug that into the expression that we have, I end up with minus rho psi m dot minus rho eta m theta dot plus the stress power minus 1 over theta q dot grad theta greater or equal to 0. Uh, the term on the left-hand side here will is often denoted by the letter script D, and so we end up with D must be greater or equal to zero, and D is called the dissipation rate per unit volume, and it must be non-negative uh, to satisfy uh, our laws of thermodynamics, the combined law of the first and the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, in the purely mechanical theory, uh, when theta dot is equal to zero and grad theta is equal to zero, 
uh, all the temperature terms drop out and we are left with something slightly simpler. It's just simply minus rho times the time rate of change of the Helmholtz free energy per unit mass plus the stress power, sigma double contracted with D, needs to be greater or equal to zero. So it's just a slightly simpler, simpler version when you don't have uh, the temperature uh, changing in time and there are no temperature gradients in the system. Okay, so this is this relationship, either this one here or this one, they're both known as the free energy imbalance. And this equation is extremely important for determining restrictions on material laws, constitutive laws uh, for various types of materials. It always has to be satisfied.